All right, I'm gonna talk about event triggered control. <clears throat> so if you think about standard systems, um, we use continuous time or discrete time controllers. If we are going, if we are using continuous time controllers, we are discretizing them and implement periodically. Or if you have two nodes, basically they exchange information periodically. For example, let's say you have some node one, node two, this node 1 and node 2 can represent several things. This can be your system, this can be your controller, the attached from the system for increasing flexibility such that you can more easily change the controllers. Or this can be a part of multi-agent system, robot 1, robot 2. They need to do some cooperative task together by exchanging some information within each other. And, uh, or it, this can be a ground station sending pilot commands to the system. So it can represent many situations. Um, so let's say to, they exchange Z1 and Z2 to do something for control, for multi-agents, for some purpose. As I just explained, they ex exchange information at each time step, which is not necessary, right? For example, uh, I will give an example, uh, let's say my daughter, she is doing her homework each time, each time step I am telling her, did you do your homework, did you do your homework, did you do your homework, it is not necessary. I would like to interact with her if she is not doing the homework, as an example. So periodic information exchange is not necessary. At this point, ETC, Event Triggered Control, relaxes these periodic interactions between robots, between ground station and a system and for the applications I just mentioned. The idea is to send a sample data version of a signal at event times, which is held as constant by the receiver until the next event. So basically I am sending an information, that information is held by the receiver as a constant, and if I, send, if I need to interact with my daughter, I send any information um, for her to do the homework, same manner. And these events are determined by event conditions. It can be nonlinear, linear. F is a map. G is a map. They are functions. And when this is violated, then I send an event to the, uh, my neighbor, my control system, or so on and so forth. I would like to specify this problem to a control problem momentarily to explain the theory behind event trigger event triggered control but that's basically what happens instead of me to send a discretized version of z1 let's say we are talking for about z1 same discussion holds for z2 instead of sending this blue curve i am sending this information and z node 2 hold it as a constant until i send the new information when this rule is violated it is held as constant, constant, constant. So two uses this Z1 hat, event triggered version of Z1. Not so that periodic information, it is not necessary to periodically send Z1. It is a periodic information exchange, which is determined by, determined by these event conditions. And at event times, only at event times, this blue curve and the red curve matches with each other. Z1 Ti equals Z1 hat Ti at event times Ti. All right, so let's focus on a basic control problem to understand moving from this philosophy, me interacting with my daughter, to this problem. All right, we would like to control a linear system, x dot equals to ax plus b, not you, I would like to uh, periodically, uh, we call it you hat, let me take my red marker. This is you hat is the sample data version or event triggered control signal. And this is my controller. Basically, I want to send, I want to make u s equals to u only at event times, think about this z1 at u hat and u, such that U1 hat drives the system so that I don't need to periodically communicate with the actual system. So first we write, the, there are three steps, finding the closed loop, stability, and implementation. 
Step one, first find this close-up system, which is x that equals to ax plus b u hat. You pretty much with a constant signal, you don't have the close-up system. So I am adding and subtracting the original b u, and um, I am rearranging things. ax plus b u plus b u hat minus u, and u is my controller. Now I can plug it here. B minus bkx it is appearing here when you plug the controller and you have this remaining term now first step in this closed loop when you don't have any event triggering let's say u hat equals to u i am driving the system with the actual control then your closed loop needs to be right some has needs to have some stability property so this a0 matrix needs to be hermits all eigenvalues are on the left half plane. You can do so by pole placement or linear quadratic optimal control. I have videos on both in, the, in my channel. You can visit. And when it is Herbert, it satisfies this leap on equation. It gives a positive definite at unique uh, P matrix. Forgot to mention all these matrices are compatible dimensions n by n, n by m, and this is k m by n. And I am assuming X is available for feedback. So, and I am going to, I am doing here stabilization problem as well. I would like to drive X uh, to zero. And if I don't have this term, if I am not doing event triggering, X, since A zero is Hurwitz, this matrix, X goes to zero. Now let's see what happens with event triggered control. All right. And as this being said, you can do comment following, uh, output feedback versions, if you want any videos, let me know. I can post more in details. All right. Turning the basics to stability, I am considering this classical Lyapunov function candidate, x transpose px. It is positive definite, regularly unbounded. I am taking its derivative, v dot equals to 2x transpose p multiplied by x dot. I am just inserting this to here. Then I arrive minus x transpose x plus this 2x transpose p b u minus u hat. So you may ask how I jump from here to here. Basically, I use this step. 2x transpose p a 0 x. I am writing it as 1 plus 1, the same term, just distributing these two. And then I am taking the first one's trans transpose, because tra it's a scalar. Transpose of a scalar is itself. It comes with x transpose a0 transpose p transpose, but this means, positive definiteness means it is symmetric, so I don't need to put a transpose here. And then I am writing it x transpose Lipunov equations, this version, this portion, multiplied by x, so that this equals to basically minus identity matrix. That's how I arrive to this term. All right, now, Basically, if you look at this other term, for this other term, in order to conclude, conclude some, uh, before that, sorry, I jumped. We are at this point right now. I am defining my event condition to be this. Most basic one. Basically, if u hat minus u, two norm, is less than or equal to epsilon, okay, I can live with this control signal. I will hold it as a constant. I will use the same control signal. If it is violated, then I am going to send you a new control signal and use that because old control signal is now outdated to, to, to drive the stability. I, I need to send you the new control system, new control signal. So as long as this condition holds, I use the old control signal. Otherwise, I, I'm going to close the switch and update us by sending the new control signal all right so to use this event condition here i am taking norm of this side which is 2 pv2 norm x2 norm and u hat minus use 2 norm now i am inserting this event condition to here i arrive minus x to the power of 2 2 pv2 x2 and epsilon I upper bounded this Lyapunov function. Now, um, to go from this step to th that step, I am taking this term, 
applying Young's inequality, so 2pb2 x2 epsilon basically satisfies this, this coming from Young's inequality. By the way, I am using here standard stuff that I described on this video, stability, the point of stability and more, uh, as well as the comparison principle that I am about to apply here. So when you apply Young's principle, Young's inequality, sorry, you arrive to this, basically this term is appearing here, and this term is appearing here. Now, to conclude, in this case, boundedness, we have this constant term. I am using, I am taking, I am make, upper bounding this Lyapunov function derivative one more time using x transpose px less than or equal to maximum uh, eigenvalue of p matrix norm of x to the power of 2 so that I have, I am basically changing this here. I am right, I am using this upper bound. This is a Lyapunov function. I am going to call it alpha. I am going to call this beta. This is alpha. And then we arrive v less than or equal to e to the power of alpha t v0 beta over alpha from comparison principle. Again, you can check comparison principle on this from this video. So to conclude, we have a boundedness with this control signal, event triggered control signal, uh, closed up system will remain bounded. Now, if you look at uh, state of state when transients die, look at beta. Beta includes this epsilon to the power of 2, which is epsilon is coming from the event condition. As expected, if you make, if you want to reduce the communications, if you look at here, if you want to reduce, let's say, if you want, instead of having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 events, if we increase epsilon, more you are going to uh, have you are going to you are going to have less communications between the controller and the system of course your bond basically bond on the state variables will be large your system will make more error or if you make epsilon small you are going to write if it is smaller you are going to get a better approximation of this uh, the continuous control signal. So it is a trade-off like you know, anything else in life. If you want to have less communications, ep increase epsilon more. If you want more, if you want to reduce communications a little bit, but also do not want to sacrifice from the performance, use a smaller epsilon. Now, implementation-wise, right, you are, gen in, let's say you are in a MATLAB code, u equals to minus kx, although I don't use the MATLAB terminology, instead of writing norm, I am writing the, exactly the same thing. So you can in MATLAB write it like norm, u hat minus u to norm, you know, uh, so that, you know, but I would like to write it in the norm format. Um, to make a long story short, you have u equals to k, you are not sending this to the signal. If this event condition is violated, meaning that this, you can also use greater, I would like to put equal as well, to more strictly enforcing this, then u hat becomes u. I am so that you can send u hat to the system, system will hold it, held it as constant until you send the next event, basically until you violate this the next time. All right, so if you want me to do a numerical example about this video, or if you have any questions, leave comments. Before I conclude, basically, you can also do this, another event rule. This was a static event rule. You can make it depending on the state as well. You can also try, of course, in this case, this stability analysis will change. You need to redo the stability analysis. And in this case, your this event times will be determined not by a constant but also how your system behaves. Let's say if x is away from the equilibrium point of zero, then this will be a bigger number. So when you are away from zero, you are going to do less events. When you are approaching to zero, you are going to do more events. Think about when you are approaching it to zero, you would like to have more precise performance. So it is kind of a trade-off. If you do so, basically, uh, I don't want to do, you can do the math. So you are going to have a condition on stability. Actually, 
let's do it for those who are not interested on this you can stop the video here for interested audience i would like to provide a couple more steps than finish this video right you have this you have arrive x to the power of 2 2 plus i am taking the norm 2 x 2 pb 2 instead of this i am inserting epsilon x 2 you have minus x to the power of 2 1 minus 2 pb 2 epsilon to claim this is less than zero global exponential stability this term must be positive such that you know you can ensure this by selecting epsilon to be you know some number satisfying this equation so here unlike the previous case when this was constant you cannot increase epsilon to a large number you this is you know that there exists a maximum such that you if you increase epsilon more than some this sufficient number this becomes negative so that you will have an unstable system but this is a you know this is a event state dependent event triggering you can also assume, you know try this and of course in we say um there are also other types of event triggering conditions and that are based on open loop approximation methods closed loop approximation methods um, dynamic ones this is norm based ones uh, recently we are developing norm free for further reducing number of events there are all kind of different events if you are interested let me know i can dive more into detail about event triggering control and talk more i am stopping the video here again for questions let me know